I'm Barry Thompson from Powerboat Magazine. You know, Kiwi boat builders, aluminium boat builders in particular, really punch above their weight when it comes to design and style in trailer boats. We've got the best looking pontoon boats in the world, we've got the wheelie boats, the amphibious boats, but one thing that we really excel in is hard top, aluminium hard top, particularly between about seven and nine metres, and none more so than Gisborne based White Pointer. Today we're on the new 970 Custom Cruiser, which is one of the latest models from uh, this prolific builder down in, in Gisborne. And what's so special about the new 970 Custom Cruiser from White Pointer is these twin 425 Yamaha XTO offshores. Not only the new engines, but they come with Hellmaster, which we're going to look at later. This muscle on the back here gives us the top speed of about 52 knots, and that's sort of laden, so you probably squeak a little bit more out if you needed it. The boat's going to be used for trolling, so you want it some economy. Well, we've got 1,800 litres in this boat, which is a massive amount of fuel. It uses 28 litres total when you're trolling at eight knots, so that is really economic. It's a, something special about those engines. I think it's amazing. So the cockpit's been designed for fishing. The one thing about White Point is, is while they are, there's a basic design, when you go to White Point, you get a, a sort of a clean sheet of paper and you design what you want within reason. And so White Point has built hundreds and hundreds of boats. So they've got a fairly good idea what works and doesn't work, but they're happy to work with a client, in this case an Australian owner from Melbourne, so he gets exactly what he wants. And in this case, it's more about fishing than anything else. So let's have a look through the cockpit first and go through the boat and see what they've done. So while the cockpit has been absolutely set up, dedicated to fishing, it's a custom cruiser, so it's a weekender as much as an overnighter. So inside has to have all those creature comforts. So to start with, you've got the full bulkhead across the back here, so you can close the door, maybe put a heater on, or air conditioning, have a lovely enclosed wheelhouse. But you've also got drop-down windows, so you've got good ventilation coming through, and you've got sliding side windows, and you've got overhead hatches, so you get a lot of air in here if you're getting a really hot day out there. And starboard, you've got the galley, got a, a nice sink unit, two burner stove, plenty of storage and a fridge underneath. Far to that, the helm, look at the seat, very, very comfortable. But it's positioned so that you can stand, got a good headroom around here, great visibility all around. But then arms come up, drop that down, bolster down there, jump on there, and in another awesome driving position. You can adjust it just to suit your size, but again, good visibility for everything. Now, if you're going to go offshore fishing, as I keep saying this is an offshore fishing boat, you want some big screens. So in this case, we've got two big Perino MFDs. You've got zip wakes to get your control. I had those on automatic before, and they really, really work well. You've got the Yamaha controls. You've got Fusion Sound System. You've got the Lumar Anchor Winch controls. Everything's here. But one of the things I like is the Helmaster. Now, what happens with the Helmaster? Well, actually, I won't explain it because it's a bit above my pay scale. I talked to uh, Steve Lockhart, a service technician from Yamaha. Okay, so we've got, uh, here we have Helmaster. Um, so basically it's an integrated boat control system. So obviously we've got the uh, joystick, which is the, the main component of it. So this allows us to, to uh, position the boat in one spot if we push the set point button. It also allows us to drift with the bow facing in the direction that we, we set. By in joystick mode, we can twist the joystick button here. That will turn the boat on its axis. We can move the boat sideways and fore and aft at the same time. Right on the starboard side, you've got the identical seat to the helm seat, and obviously facing that way when you're going along with this way, it's up to you. Swivels around, but you've got this nice table, wooden table with drink holders. But the other part of it is this drops down, and you lift this arm up. So you can get out easy and drop that on top of there, get the right way around, and you've got a berth. Not very long, but when you drop this seat down, you can probably stretch out easy for a couple of kids and uh, a bit of a tight fit, but it's another berth for your mate who's uh, out there fishing with you. You need plenty of storage in a boat like this. Well, you've got three drawer storage here, a bit more storage under here, and of course there's all the area in the galley. Under here it looks like storage, but actually it's not. What it is is a 400 litre fresh water tank, so she's set up for long distance. 1,800 litres of fuel behind it, 400 litres of water here. You've got plenty. Right, and accommodation wise, we've got a nice large cabin area for it here. Big V berths, plenty of room to, to lie down. 
there's plenty of room for me. Two people in there. We've obviously got an infill in here, so make one big double. Got a toilet under here. Storage racks either side. It's all fully lined, so there's no hint of any aluminium. But have a look at this. When Rex Bryant says attention to detail, he really means it. And I think you just need to have a look at what the wiring is like, and that's very, very a testimony to the whole construction and build of the boat. You can just see the attention to detail, the way everything's fitted, everything lines up, everything's marked, so that if you've got an issue with any bit of electronic componentry, bang, you can find it straight away and fix it. So again, attention to detail, paramount in a white pointer. We've got the cages around the back. These are great for when you're fishing. You can get right back into the far corner of the boat. And if you're into diving, power, scallops, whatever, you've got a drop-down ladder there. Same on both sides. Lift this up, walk through here. Now, in the transom area, seriously, for fishing, live bait tank, another one on the other side. Little windows in the front so you can make sure your, your liveys are staying alive. Storage under here for batteries. Seriously large bait board, drink holders, rod holders, good towing post here in case you have to bring somebody back. Tackle drawer, plenty of space for everything you need. The cockpit is uncluttered and what you notice is the side combings here are flush. One, good to sit on if you're diving, rolling off the side or sitting here just waiting for that big fish to come along, that 20 pound snapper that uh, we're still waiting for. Got drink holders, and these are also good to chuck sinkers and lures and bits and pieces in. Rod holders either side, and they're cork decking, so nice and durable. The cockpit seating includes uh, port and starboard bins on the starboard side. It's just a wet locker, so you can throw your bait, great place for your catch. And on the port side, it's a fridge freezer. What I like about these boats these days is hand wash. You can use your leg, wash your hands over here or push it in here. And note these side trays, how wide they are. You can see live dive bottles on there, as you can see from this fender. Big enough for dive bottles both sides, you get four bottles in there. Hot and cold shower here. Uh, trash bin here. And somewhere to put your, your gas bottle. So, you know, very nice just sitting here in the sun today. Fishing boats need good combing heights. And you can see this here. So if you're fishing, you've got good something to lean against, but you've also got toe kick area, you've got area under here, so you can really brace yourself in here to bring up the big fish. I mean, you need a fishing rod, but uh, like you can see what I'm talking about. You know how big and open the cockpit is? I've said before, it's uncluttered, it's what you want for fishing. Nice flat floor, nothing to get in the way. There's not even any lockers under here. I mean, the 1800 litre fuel tank takes up most of the space. But the cockpit self-draining, it's got big scuppers. So if you're out offshore, which this boat's designed for, these engines are designed to get you out there and back, and you get a big wave in or you get a lot of water in, it's gonna come out the back, no worries at all. Also, a bit of mood lighting underneath the sides so that you're fishing at night, you're not getting light in your face. And you've got overhead lights as well. So well lit up for night fishing, if you want it. We're just heading back into Auckland Harbour. We're doing 17 knots. Bit of a breeze out there. Um, I found when I went for a run before that it was in the mid 20s to 30 knots. It's really, really comfortable even in this chop. You got a boat that weighs probably around 6,000 kgs fully loaded. It's got 8 mil hull, and so you've got a bit of weight in here. The one thing that White Pointer pride themselves on is the quality of construction. Not only the sea keeping and handling of the boat, but the way they're built. They go to the extra mile. They've got everything in there. They take it out, they fit it dry, they take it out, they put it back in, so they know it's all going to work. So when the owner gets the boat, everything's functional. There's no second guessing. So you're getting a real, really quality product. And particularly this boat, the owner up from 6 mil to 8 mil hull, so it's really tough. Um, you know, went from 500 litre fuel tank to, I think it was 1800 litre fuel tank. So he plans to use this seriously offshore. So this, with the motors, is what this boat's all about. There's no doubt that the White Pointer 970 Custom Cruiser lives up to the name that White Pointer put on their boats, the perfect predator. And if anyone's looking for a seriously tough, blue water capable, exceptionally well built, then maximum size trailer boat, then you'd be really hard pressed to go past the White Pointer. In fact, it's probably in the limits of being a trailer boat but hey dry stacking for sure for sure so 
my only regret is that we tested this boat, reviewed it for the video on Auckland Harbour. I'd love to take it out to the Ranfurly Bank sometime, so next time you build another one, Rex, before you send it away to Australia, give me a call, I'll come down there and do it. Spot you later.